Well, guys, in this video, I want to answer this question. Can you go five days over 25 miles through the Wind River Range on $500 worth of gear? That's what we have done. We have used and purchased $500 worth of equipment, including a tent, a backpack, sleeping pad, sleeping bag, and pillow. So as to the sleeping pad, uh, per our usual arrangement, for $500 or less. And I'm gonna give you some tips and ideas to help you guys out because it's so easy to get overwhelmed when you start looking at some of the prices for backpacking gear. You can easily spend $1,000 for those gear items that I just listed. And for many of you, maybe you're just getting into it and you're like, I don't even know if I'm gonna really enjoy it. Or, you know, I just do one backpacking trip a year and man, $1,000, is that really the best way to spend my money? Should I invest it in other aspects of my equipment? And that's what I wanna answer in this video. So we're gonna show you our sleeping system, the backpack that I decided to go with, and some tent options that you can purchase easily for a combined cost of under 500 bucks. Now, as we are about to jump into the backpack first, because that's what gets all your crap from your car all the way up to the mountain peak. If you don't have a good backpack, man, is this experience not going to be fun. But before this, I want to really take a look at this three-legged stool that all backpacking gear really stand upon. And it's what if you cut costs, you are usually going to have to add weight and lack features. Uh, and if you want to cut weight and add features, you're usually going to have to pay for it. And that's kind of the way the cookie crumbles. And that's kind of the way it is. So in this video, the point is that we're trying to cut costs to get you out onto the trail uh, and save you some money. But in doing so, you're going to probably be adding a little bit more weight per item than you could if you spent more money and you may lack some features. So that's something just to consider as we go through here. And as we jump right into it, let's talk about this pack. Now, I went with the Osprey Rook 65 liter backpack. Now, there are two reasons why I went with this pack. One is that it is designed as Osprey's introductory backpack. It's made for that, um, for people who are just getting into backpacking and for name brand recognition. Osprey is well known in the industry over for making some of the best packs on the market. So I wanted to see what their pack at about $150, which is what I paid for, would offer to me now having done it for years and had all sorts of different brands and designs and models. What was this Osprey able to offer? And these are the two main things that I took away. Wow, were the ergonomics and comfortability of ride amazing. Their ability to dial in your yoke is the fastest I've seen, and it is very comfortable and it's fully integrated with a good flow through, good system. And this thing was carrying about 45 pounds of gear all the way up the trail and then all the way back down. It really rode well on my hips, didn't create any hot spots. The yoke was very dense, which was able to help carry that weight when you do feel some of it on your shoulders and it was very comfortable. And then the overall materials of the design was really good. I didn't see that they were cutting any corners and the materials felt very robust, very tough, um, good zippers, good clips. All of that were very, very good and well laid out in that design. Um, the one aspect that I really felt like the corners were cut was more in uh, some of the options and features like we talked about. And one of them majorly is the back panel. It's this huge dead zone with nothing there. They have a couple loops for daisy chaining with a carabiner, you know, something. And I hooked like my sandals uh, and stuff too. Um, and you could maybe run some shock cord and attach a coat or something. But having a big, nice basket on the back there wouldn't have really cost any more money, maybe a couple bucks. Um, and would have really given you the next level. I, I use those big pockets on the back of backpacks all the time to stuff big things in, and uh, they really are a, a boon to my outdoor adventures. And the fact that this pack doesn't have that, and it's just this big dead zone is kind of an obvious like, all right, that's where you're cutting some of the corners. Now guys, throughout this video, I will have a bunch of hyperlinks for you guys below, not only over to Amazon, the back country, as well as a lot of the other distributors that I regularly look through when I'm buying my own gear and looking for stuff to test out and review here at the channel. I do appreciate it when you use the hyperlinks that we offer to you. Uh, and feel free to throw some uh, links and comments below as well if you know of certain other models either that I should look into or for the audience. Now, Osprey obviously isn't the only pack you could look into. Uh, I know Kelty has the Outskirt as well as Coyote Series in the 70 for the Outskirt and 65 liter for um, the Coyote. Those are two options that you could look at as well. Um, I know Alps brand of backpacks makes some packs that you can easily get for around 
the $150 price point. And if you go to a lot of the big retailers um, or even sometimes search on Amazon, you can find discontinued or like last year's models at good price points and you can get yourself a good pack that maybe normally is 200 or even 250 bucks that you can dial it down to the 150 to $100 price point without too much difficulty. But folks, I wanna give a quick shout out to today's sponsor of this video, Grip6. Now we're going through some amazing terrain. And as we're going, it's easy to really get focused in on your more expensive gear items, your tent, your pack, you know, those type of things. But if you miss it on the very small aspects to your loadout, it can ruin the entire trip. And I've been using on this trip, as well as many others, my Grip6 belt, minimalist belt, as well as my Grip6 wool socks. Those are the only socks that I took with me, and I've had all sorts of different types and pairs, but these, man, work so well with their higher crew, as well as their low-cut ankle socks for men and women, all different shapes and sizes that you can look at and use, and they've been working so well, and it's important to have a good pair of wool socks when you are in the backcountry or you're going to a board meeting. And so that's what I love about Grip6 is that these Slim minimalist belts work so well. They're, they can be adjusted in every single aspect micronically, like just so small little minute adjustments, and they hold your belt or you hold your pants up and don't cause any hot spots with your backpacking waist belt, which is a huge plus. But you may have been backpacking over the weekend and Monday you got to go to the office. These still look and function so well for an office environment. They have all sorts of different shapes, sizes, men's, women's. I mean, guys, it's endless and it's awesome because they're all manufactured right here in America. Folks, I encourage you to check out that hyperlink in the description box below. See what they got going on and I know you won't be disappointed in what Grip6 has to offer. And with that, let's go ahead and get back to these gear items. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and talk about tents and your shelter system. Now, what I've been using for quite a while, my brother has been using, is the Kelty Salida series. Now, I believe this is no longer uh, being built and sold. We got these years and years ago, the Salida 2, my brother has had uh, that he took with him. Uh, he's had that for almost nine years now and is still trucking and he doesn't really have any reason to upgrade unless he wants to cut down on, again, weight. So we got our spot, took a little finding, a little bit of finagling, but we got our spot, amazing views. Chris and I and our one mans are gonna be over here, Nate and his two man chalet, he's over there. So, um, but yeah, knock it out with our sub $150 tents, working great. Uh, now, our buddy Chris took an Alps um, one-man tent and that he purchased, I think, for like 110, 120 bucks. Uh, there are some really good brands out there as well. And particularly uh, right around this season when I'm filming this, the Labor Day and then into the holidays, you can often find some really good brands um, for the one and two-man tents. Uh, not only from Kelty, they have a new kind of version that's right around that price point, but you can look at it even at an MSR um, one man you can get for right around uh, 150 bucks when it's on sale uh, marmot north face um, and and uh, mountain smith as well there are several brands out there that you're going to be able to find one to two man backpacking tents for uh, right around that 100 to 150 now that brings us into the weight that's the area that you are going to have to eat it if you are going to spend about 150 or less on your backpacking tent what you can do uh, the features all seem to be there the durability we've seen for years now um, but what we do see is the weight and so the one-man tents usually and from everything I've done my research and stuff you're gonna look at about four to four and a half pounds on average for a one man uh, with a footprint in this price range and then you're gonna be looking at between five and a half and six and a half pounds for a two man with a footprint and I do encourage you to get a footprint if it doesn't come with it or to use Tyvek which is a waterproof very lightweight material that saves your bottom of your tent gives you longevity of your tent and protects it from the elements one other aspect that you will usually see corners cut in this price range are in the tent stakes you usually get the very poor loop over aluminum uh, tent stakes that bend very easily and they're basically garbage and not worth it. So if you are going to go with one of these tents, if they do not come with good stakes, I would encourage you go online for about 10 to 15 bucks. You can get yourself some good Y based or X based um, aluminum tent stakes that are going to last a lot longer and be a lot more durable for you. And so that's something that you will have to kind of do after to augment what tents in this price range are going to come in with. All right, guys, and finally, we come to the sleeping system, right? We've gotten up to the 
location that we're enjoying. We've set up our tent and now we got to go to sleep. Now, what I've been using for years and it has done the job is climate sleeping pads. Alrighty, so there you have it right in there. So these are, you know, pads that I've been used to sleeping on. Sleeping system, tent worked great, obviously. Didn't have any rain or anything, but again, I've been in it for a long time. Um, so as to the sleeping pad, uh, per our usual arrangement, which means that uh, it did enough, you know, to get me asleep. Uh, I didn't have any aches and pains. But, you know, tossing and turning a lot throughout the night. Usually my routine on these um, is, you know, like the first three hours I can get some good sleep. And then, you know, I can sleep for about 30 minutes, wake up, toss and turn, readjust, sleep for another 30 minutes, wake up, toss, turn, kind of like that um, on these backpacking trips with this type of um, mattress. So um, what that will do is give you about two and a half inches, I believe, two to two and a half inches of density. Um, kind of getting you off the ground a little bit and uh, will just give you a little bit of relief on your hip bones and back when you are sleeping. Now, followed up by sleeping bags. Now, I happen to land what normally is about a $200 sleeping bag for $89 um, at Sierra Trading Post, and that's a great place where you can find a lot of this stuff on sale, a discount, last year's model, um, you know, things like that. I found a climate 20 degree, uh, 650 uh, down uh, filled uh, sleeping bag and it works awesome. It's fantastic. I'm very happy with it. Uh, it does it a little bit on the bulky side, comes in at right around four pounds. Um, you know, you can get smaller ones out there that will compress themselves a lot smaller, but those are, again, gonna cost you a lot more money. So the footprint inside the bag for the most part, inside your backpack is where you're gonna see it the most and a little bit in the weight but it does a fantastic job those nights when it got down to 35 degrees wow did it keep me warm now this is the rule of thumb that i've always used with sleeping bags is whatever it's rated at your comfort level is usually going to be about 15 degrees above that just kind of keep that in consideration when you are looking at your sleeping bag system i know there are a lot of brands again alps alps is a good kind of budget brand uh, i know kelty i know mountain smith uh, Marmot often have several different options that are available that you can get for around that $100 to $120 price point. Now we're at 450, dollars so we have about 50 bucks, let's say, to play around with. Now, what I would recommend is the Sea to Summit um, pillow. This pillow has been awesome for years for me. It really does f uh, fit well, it's lightweight, um, it does have kind of a fleece cover to it, so it doesn't feel like you're putting your face up against like a Ziploc bag and I really do enjoy it. Um, it has supported my neck well and does exactly what I need it to do. Now I'm a side sleeper and two years ago I started bringing a small compact climate pillow for my knees and wow is that a game changer has helped me a bunch now if you're a stomach or back sleeper you probably can just get away with one but if you're a side sleeper you could look into those so a little secret this trip ended up being actually four days we had planned for five taking two days to get out but the three of us, we have young families. We wanted to get back to our families. We really enjoyed ourselves. And we actually wanted to kind of push ourselves a little bit. We had planned to go about five miles out on the way home, camp overnight, and then get home the next day. But we decided to push ourselves and hike out in one day with all of this gear. Read it, baby. 13.03. 13.03 and it is four o'clock. So in six hours and 45 minutes. Oh my gosh, way to go guys. So I gotta say, for the $500 of the gear that we use, particularly this pack, awesome. Totally carried us there and back, carried me there and back, and we'd do it again, absolutely. So if that's what you gotta start out with, you can absolutely do some epic trails. So folks, there you have it. I hope that this video has been fun and entertaining for you, but also giving you the information that you need to maybe help save a little bit on your initial upstart costs of getting into backpacking. And obviously you can upgrade over time, getting us to where we need to be. And this is what it's all about. Backpacking is about this, the experience and seeing amazing views that few people do. And so guys, I appreciate you so much. I, for, I look forward to reading the comments below and any other questions that you guys have, I will do my best to answer in those comments and check us out on uh, social media, Instagram, Facebook, putting up stuff there all the time, behind the scenes stuff. And until next time, always remember, stay equipped, stay prepared, and we'll see you out there.